Tonight on the Worldview Report, another transgendered person goes off on a violent rampage, this time with a knife targeting movie theaters in Massachusetts. California's testing an oppressive new road tax that will track the movement of drivers. And we have frightening footage of a tornado that ripped through northern Texas, sadly killing at least seven people. Also, there are reports that another large hospital system is accused in a lawsuit of illegally sharing the identities and private health information of its patients with social media giant Meta, the owner of Facebook. A U.S. congressional delegation flies to Taiwan to show its support after China practices a blockade of the island. And we will explain why U.S.-made satellite-guided missiles are proving useless against Russian targets in Ukraine. All these stories and more as the Worldview Report begins right now. This is Worldview Report with host Brandon House. Whether it is news from the nation's capital or your state capital, from the classroom to the boardroom, from national security to national and local news that impacts you and your family, Worldview Report is your trusted source for vital and uncensored news. And now, here is Brandon House. Good evening and welcome to the Worldview Report. A biological woman who self-identifies as a trans man is in police custody after allegedly stabbing four young girls at a movie theater in Braintree, Massachusetts on Saturday night. According to an ABC News report, quote, at 6 p.m. Saturday, a man entered one of the theaters at the AMC Braintree 10. Once inside the theater, the suspect stabbed four girls between the ages of 9 and 17 years of age. Police told ABC, adding that the attack appeared to be unprovoked and without warning. The four girls sustained non-life-threatening injuries and were transported to Boston hospitals for treatment. The suspect allegedly left the scene in a black SUV, according to police. Using video footage in their investigation, police they were able to identify a license plate and alert other law enforcement agencies. It was, well, after this alert that authorities discovered that a car matching that description was involved in a similar assault that occurred in Plymouth, Massachusetts. That was at approximately 7.04 p.m., about an hour after the stabbing at the AMC in Baintree. That's when the suspect allegedly stabbed two other people, a 21-year-old woman and a 29-year-old man, in a McDonald's in Plymouth. That's according to the Massachusetts State Police. Both were in non-life-threatening condition and were transported to area hospitals. The psycho stabber then crashed their SUV before police were able to take him into custody. In an attempt to recoup the lost revenue from the state's gas tax, California is now piloting a program called the California Road Charge. It will tax the driver for every mile driven instead of at the pump when filling up their gas tank. The pilot program is offering $400 for volunteers to install a tracking device in their vehicle or provide a number of pictures logging the journey. The project, it's being overseen by the California Department of Transportation. The auto publication Car Buzz reported that this Privacy killing Orwellian program is a, quote, necessary evil, end quote. The outlet noted that the state, well, they already charge drivers of electric vehicles $100 a year. That's a fee to recoup some of the lost gas tax revenue. That's according to a state transportation spokesperson. And they said the average combustion driver pays about $300 per year in gas taxes. Given that there are 1.5 million EVs on the California roads and all of this money is supposed to be, well, for upkeep of the state's highway system, it's seen as not fair that a Tesla owner isn't paying as much as the driver of a Toyota Corolla, for instance. The program will start July 1st and it'll run for six months. Each month, the driver, they'll have to pay for their mileage online, which will be tracked either through a device in their vehicle through the connected systems offered by your vehicle manufacturer or by taking pictures and logging the odometer. Hmm. 
This spring has brought untold damage from a tornado season that has to rank as one of the worst in U.S. history. First, it was Oklahoma and Texas, then Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas. Well, on Sunday evening, May 27th, it was Kentucky and Illinois that got walloped by a monster tornado. Now, Texas, they've also been hit again. Here's a video captured by storm chaser Connor Steins. It's video of the tornado hitting a gas station and truck stop in Valley View, North Texas. Watch this. So far, seven people, including two children, have sadly been killed from this tornado in North Texas, along with multiple other injuries. Following her announcement that she would be voting for former President Donald Trump after challenging him in the Republican primaries this year, Trump says he is sure that former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley will be joining his team in some capacity. Haley was the United Nations ambassador under Trump's first administration. She stated last week in her first remarks since dropping out of the race that she would be supporting her former boss and opponent while calling Joe Biden's presidency a, quote, catastrophe, end quote. In a revealing interview with News 12, that's New York, after a campaign rally in the Bronx, Trump responded to Haley's recent public endorsement and her exit from the presidential race. When asked about the possibility of Haley being a part of his team or even on his ticket, Trump responded positively. Quote, well, I think she's going to be on our team because we have a lot of the same ideas, the same thoughts. I appreciated what she said. You know, we had a nasty campaign. It was pretty nasty, but she's a very capable person and I'm sure she's going to be on our team in some form, absolutely, end quote. Trump declined to name his top three possible running mates, but had previously noted that Haley was not on his short list. The former president said in a prior interview that he would likely make his announcement around the time of the GOP convention later this summer. Haley said during a conversation at the Hudson Institute, that's a Washington-based neoconservative think tank, by the way, and she's now, I guess, there as the Walter P. Stern chair. Here's what she said, quote, I put my priorities on a president who's going to have the back of our allies and hold our enemies to account who would secure the border, end quote. Military.com reports that a U.S. congressional delegation met Taiwan's new leader on Monday, all in a show of support days after China held drills around the self-governing island in response to his inauguration. Representative Andy Barr, Republican of Kentucky and the co-chair of the Taiwan Caucus in the U.S. Congress, said that the United States is fully committed to supporting Taiwan's military and diplomatically and economically doing so. Barr said at a news conference in the Capitol after the delegation met with the new president of Taiwan, quote, there should be no doubt, there should be no skepticism in the United States, Taiwan or anywhere in the world of American resolve to maintain the status quo and peace in the Taiwan Strait, end quote. Taiwan, they were tracking dozens of Chinese planes and Navy vessels right off their coast on the second day of a large exercise held by the People's Liberation Army, all in response to the island's new leadership. China, well, they regard Taiwan as a renegade province that must come under control of China. 
And if necessary, they say they're going to use force to bring Taiwan to heel. Well, the Chinese government, they expressed strong opposition to the congressional visit, saying it undermined the China-U.S. relations and it undermined peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. The delegation, it included four Republicans and two Democrats, and it was led by Representative Michael McCall, the chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Last year, China sanctioned the Texas Republican after he visited Taiwan in April. McCall, he cited congressional approval last month of a military aid bill for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Over the weekend, NATO Secretary General Hans Stolenberger backed growing calls within the alliance to allow Ukraine to strike inside Russian territory, listen now, using Western supplied weapons. Zero Hedge reports that this has without doubt already happened, especially in Crimea, using UK supplied missiles. But the NATO chief in an interview with The Economist said, quote, the time has come for allies to consider whether they should lift some of the restrictions they have imposed on weapons donated to Ukraine, end quote. Watch this. Lift the restrictions on the use of American weapons over Russian territory. I believe the time has come for allies to uh, consider whether they should lift uh, some of the restrictions they have imposed uh, on uh, weapons donated to Ukraine. Um, because we need to remember what this is. This is a, a war of aggression by Russia against Ukraine. Ukraine has the right to defend themselves, and that includes also uh, striking targets on Russian territory. Um, some allies have already lifted those uh, restrictions, uh, allowing uh, to use their weapons against military targets in Ukraine, and I believe the time has come for other allies to uh, so consider this. The UK has effectively lifted the restrictions, and it is the US that's really the single most important one. I think what we see now uh, demonstrates the need to reconsider those uh, restrictions, not least because we have fighting going on along the uh, border between Russia and, uh, and Ukraine, especially in the Kharkiv region, where the front line and the borderline is more or less the same. And then, of course, if you deny Ukraine the right to hit military targets uh, on uh, uh, Russian territory, then uh, uh, you make it very hard for them to uphold the right for self-defense. This is self-defense. Self-defense is enshrined in the UN Charter. It's legal, uh, it's legitimate, and we uh, are helping Ukraine with upholding that right, and that should include the ability to also strike uh, targets uh, on Russian territory when there are military legitimate targets we're talking about. So, the memo has gone out. Almost every Western nation has at least one person in its government who is now calling for all of this to happen. And by the way, it seems to be all on cue. Like they're all reading from the same script. Like this has all been pre-planned. Hmm. We'll be right back after this break. A lot of people are having great success with a weight management program with Bella Trim, but it's just a tool. In terms of ingredients, Chromex or Chromium Picolini improves the actions of insulin, so you have better glucose management, and in addition, it promotes fat utilization. Fat utilization, or fat burning, is also a feature of metabolite, which are two botanicals that stimulate a switch called AMP kinase. And so you tend to burn fat, reduce belly fat or visceral fat. Who doesn't want that? Metabolite has the ability to stimulate satiety or reduce those cravings. That's really very, very important. And it does that by raising GLP-1 levels. In addition, we've addressed the microbiome by using prebiotics. Healthier microbiome, better weight management. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us tonight and every night. And please remember, we're brought to you by you. There are two ways you can support us and keep this free broadcast going that I'd like to mention right now. One of them is by visiting worldviewtube.com slash vault. Worldviewtube.com forward slash vault. For about 15 plus years, we have had an archive of all of our radio shows and TV shows, my eBooks, documentaries, and more. Uh, I don't mention it and haven't mentioned it much over the last three years because I wanted to get in there and update a lot of the computer code. That's now happened. So if you would like to join, you can now join our worldviewtube.com forward slash vault. 
and have access to over 20 years of my radio shows, TV shows, documentaries. About 15 of my books are in there as eBooks. There's all of our Ozarks Worldview Weekend conferences going back to 2004. So that's 20 years just of our Ozarks Worldview Weekends that you'll find on demand. Massive historical documents in there in the vault. I'm, I'm telling you folks, interviews with people like Dr. Jimmy DeYoung, Ron Carlson, uh, Michael Reagan, David Limbaugh. I mean, testimonies by all kinds of people, including people that survived the Holocaust. Uh, it, it's filled with tons of historical information. I think will help you, uh, well, more accurately understand the times and where we're going and how to respond. We have a powerful search engine. We have transcripts of shows as well that you can search all there inside our vault, worldviewtube.com slash vault. Please consider joining. It is a big part that helps us, well, generate the revenue we need to keep going and funding this broadcast, worldviewtube.com forward slash vault. Another way you can support us is by making a contribution at wvwfoundation.com. Our foundation exists for many reasons, but primarily our foundation is all about pushing out news, information, documentaries, conferences, um, you know, radio shows, content free to help people understand the times. Now, after several days, all that content rolls into our vault, but we always want to push it out for free. So no one is, um, you know, not given the privilege of hearing and learning the truth, not only in our live stream, live streaming it, but then also we put it up on demand at worldviewtube.com and you can access it for several days before it goes into the vault. So if you appreciate the fact we are still pushing out free content, all the thousands of dollars that it takes to push out free content and pay for the bandwidth, please consider supporting our foundation, one of our biggest sponsors. You can make a contribution online or by mail. All the information is at wvwfoundation.com. Our foundation is also the one that brings you our church service on Sunday nights at worldviewtube.com, 8 p.m. Central Time on Sunday nights. I'll be back this coming Sunday night. Uh, as I teach, Lesson 8, I'm teaching through the book of Revelation, 8 p.m. Central Time, Sunday nights. That's our Sunday night church service, worldviewtube.com, 8 p.m. Central Time, Sunday nights, brought to you by our foundation, wvwfoundation.com. Thank you again for your support. American satellite guided missiles are proving useless against Russia's electronic jamming abilities in Ukraine. Many high-tech U.S. weapon systems in Ukraine are now experiencing a hit rate of no more than 10%. Why? Because Russia has, over time, been able to fine-tune its jamming signals. So reports Mike Shedlock with Mishtalk.com. Russia's jamming of the guidance systems of modern Western weapons, well, they include the Excalibur GPS-guided artillery shells and the high Mobility Artillery Rocket System, or HIMARS, which can fire some U.S.-made rockets with a range of up to 50 miles. And that has eroded Ukraine's ability to defend its territory, and it has left officials in Kiev urgently seeking help from the Pentagon to obtain upgraded arms from manufacturers. The success rate for the U.S.-designed Excalibur shells, for example, fell sharply over a period of months to less than 10% hitting their targets. That was before Ukraine's military abandoned them last year. That's all according to the confidential Ukrainian assessments. Six months ago, after Ukraine's report of the problem, Washington simply stopped providing Excalibur shells because of the high failure rate. That's what the Ukrainian officials said, speaking on the condition of anonymity in order to discuss the sensitive security matter. In other cases, such as aircraft dropped bombs, which are called JDAMs, the manufacturer provided a patch. In Ukraine, well, they apparently continue to use them. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, well, it created a modern testing ground for Western arms that has never been used against a foe with Moscow's ability to jam GPS navigation. But even before the United States ceased deliveries, Ukrainian artillerymen had largely stopped using the Excalibur according to the assessment. Why? Well, because the shells, they're harder to use compared with standard howitzer rounds. They require time-consuming special calculations and programming. And now they're shunned altogether. That's what military personnel in the field 
are saying. Well, now it's time for our nightly Worldview Report commentary. Natural News reports that UK lawmakers applauded a neo-Nazi unit of the Ukrainian military this week during a parliamentary roundtable event. The controversial militia in question is known as Azov Brigade. The unit was reportedly founded in 2014 by a white supremacist known as Andrei Baltsky. It's clear from their logo what they stand for. It was designed using symbols that were used in the past by the SS. The battalion well, it started out as a volunteer militia responding to the war in Danbos and had just a few hundred members at first. It was known for being highly effective in battle. The unit, well, it was eventually integrated into the main armed forces of Ukraine, going from a voluntary militia to a unit that is a formal unit of the military under control of the state. Although they did get to hold on to their Third Reich, well, patches. And now a regiment, a regiment-sized unit. It operates as part of the Ukrainian National Guard and has both Ukrainians and foreign fighters who subscribe apparently to its beliefs. Boasting private and state training and support is given a surprising degree of autonomy when it comes to operational decisions. Somehow a group of British parliamentarians, well, they were willing to meet with them and listen to what they had to say. Even though this group has been accused by Amnesty International, the UN and human rights, well, of a slew of human rights violations, including torturing and raping civilians. The three Azov members included men who were captured in Maripol, and they told the lawmakers about, well, the roughly 900 other members of their neo-Nazi group who are still being held prisoner in Russia, where Azov has been banned on the grounds that it is an extremist organization. The trio posed for photos with Boris Johnson, the former prime minister of the UK. They can be seen in the photos holding an Azov banner that features a symbol that was used by the Waffen-SS division, Das Reich, known as the Wolf's Angel. Johnson was also seen in videos on social media telling the UK government that he thinks they should provide Ukraine with more weapons and money. He said, quote, the single best investment that we can make in the defense of the whole Euro-Atlantic area is supporting Ukrainian heroes, end quote. Well, here's Boris Johnson honoring the neo-Nazis with the Azov Brigade reportedly just last week. Watch this. Uh, my message to you is very simple. Uh, thank you to uh, um, the heroes from the Azov Brigade who have us about their presence tonight. Give the Ukrainians what they need. Give them the weapons. Give them the authorization to use those weapons outside their own borders if there's now absolutely ludicrous that Ukrainians should be forbidden from doing what Putin uh, is doing himself and uh, attacking Ukrainian forces. Why on earth should Ukrainian, Ukrainians be able uh, to attack Russian forces mustering on their borders? Give them those weapons, give them the attack, and give them the budget, give them the air defences that they need. It's the single best investment that we can make in the defence of the whole Euro-Atlantic area is supporting Ukrainian heroes. We rely wholly on heroes such as the people who are here tonight with us from the Azov Brigade. He asked, quote, why on earth shouldn't Ukrainians be allowed to attack Russian forces inside Russia using US and UK weapons? Question mark, end quote. Well, folks, that's an easy one. Because for starters, that means the U.S. and the U.K. are now directly involved in war with Russia and the Russian people. Killing Russian civilians, and I think provoking Putin to launch the same type of weapons or worse against Western cities. Perhaps Johnson, well, hasn't thought all of this through, <laughs> but he's not alone. The U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, and the Biden administration, well, they are echoing the same call to unleash Western weapons on Russian cities. Oh, and so is the NATO general, the NATO general secretary, and a lineup of leaders from NATO member countries as well. 
They're all apparently itching for war with Russia. This is truly, well, not just remarkable. It's reckless. And it's, in my words, in my thoughts, it will lead to World War III. It's a war in which there will be no winners, only losers. Well, that does it for this edition of the Worldview Report. As always, thank you for tuning in and supporting the broadcast. One way you can support us, of course, is by going to melissahousebg.com. It's a daily elixir. I've been taking it since last year with amazing results. We get so many positive testimonies from you, our viewing audience, people that I know, people that attend our Ozarks conference, telling us firsthand what this elixir has done for them. There are nearly 80 clinical trials behind it, folks. So <laughs> it's backed up by science, 80 clinical trials. Collagen, uh, it's got astaxanthin, which is loaded with antioxidants, crosses the brain blood barrier. It's got also cat's claw, which is an anti-inflammatory. Full details at melissahousebg.com. Get a subscription. You will save money with the subscription and you don't have to worry about running out. That's what we have. Melissa and I have a subscription so we can take it every day because we have had such positive results we want to keep taking it, okay? So again, please check it out, melissahousebg.com. Also, numi.com forward slash house one. Numi has what's called glutathione in it. It's a molecule. The science shows it acts as a detoxer of our cells. Hmm, what could have happened in 2020 that would make you want to have that? Or what could be coming that would make you want to have access to glutathione? Ask yourself that. Numi.com forward slash house one. Numi.com forward slash house one. 162,000 studies on glutathione at PubMed. Again, science behind this. Glutathione. And Numi contains glutathione. Again, Numi.com forward slash house one. And then be sure to go to twc.health forward slash Brandon. Get not only your emergency medical kit with antibiotics, make sure you get the contagion kit. Dr. Peter McCullough, Dr. James Thorpe have both been on my program saying when it comes to bird flu, don't panic, prepare. Get their contagion kit because what they're going to push on us, Dr. Thorpe and Dr. McCullough have said on Brandon House Live, these are the meds you would want to take. The question is, will we be able to get them? Remember when they blocked a lot of us from getting ivermectin? So go ahead and get your contagion kit on hand for your family members, all right? You can do that at twc.health forward slash Brandon. Use that URL. You'll not only save money, but we get credit and they help support our broadcast. twc.health forward slash Brandon, all right? That does it for this edition of the Worldview Report. Till next time in Brandon House, may God save America. Take care.